Good morning and welcome to Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Tequesta, Florida. I'm Joan Enskow and today I will be reading the, the bulletin for you. Okay, and uh, it's uh, January 15th, Monday, and uh, here in Southeast Florida, it's a uh, the sun's all peeking out here, <laughs> so it should be a good day for us. So taking a moment here, and we'll be ready to do morning prayer, right, too. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk on your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in life and eternal life. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. And uh, today, of course, is Martin Luther King Day. And uh, although we don't have a um, specific um, person to uh to raise up today we raise up martin luther king in his period of time he was um he was uh, a a king's he was his a legacy today let us remember his bold reliance on god to change the heart of the nation and the world and uh, he was gandhi he he admired Gandhi and followed his ways, and he did it with nonviolent resistance. And uh, as we all know the rest of the story, it wasn't pleasant for him, but he met his maker, and he started a revolution in a quiet way. And uh, it's, it's somehow rather still still something we have to consider and be kind to everyone. Anyway, Martin Luther King, remember him. And um, uh, we do have a crowd today. There's Ian and Pam, Wendy, Debbie, and Julie and Pete. And I welcome you all live. And uh, for those of you that have turned in later, and we thank you for joining us, be sure to leave a prayer request. Okay, and we will... Now begin with uh, saying together the Venite. Change my position here. Okay. <laughs> Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Today we say together Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. 
My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love. And for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And te let's see. And teaches his way to the lowly. Let me just check this out. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, forgive my sin, for it is great. Who are they who fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that they should choose. They shall dwell in prosperity, and their offspring shall inherit the land. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him and will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and have pity on me, for I am left alone and in misery. The sorrows of my heart have increased. Bring me out of my troubles. Look upon my adversity and misery, and forgive me all my sin. Look upon my enemies, for they are many, and they bear a violent hatred against me. Protect my life and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have trusted in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for my hope has been in you. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. I'll say that again. Deliver Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. Glory to God, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from Genesis chapter 8. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subscribed from the face of the ground but the dove found no place to set its foot and it returned to him to the ark for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth so he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him anymore. In the 601st year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was what was dry, and the Lord said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, 
so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his son's wives and every animal, every creeping thing and every bird, everything that moves on the earth went out of the ark by families. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when the Lord smelt the pleasing odor, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind. For the inclination of the human heart is evil from youth. Nor will I ever again destroy every living creature as I have done, as long as the earth endures. Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's good to hear the story. It gives us hope. The first song of Isaiah will say together, Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is from John, second to, uh, the second chapter, and we go into the third chapter. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, Many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about anybody or anyone, for he himself knew what was in everyone. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born to the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, 
yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. That's a good one. The Song of the Redeemed said in unison, O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We say now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Okay. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O Lord, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day is Second Sunday after Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illuminated by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known and worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns on God now and forever. A colic for peace. O God, the author of peace and comfort, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, 
from all assaults of our enemies, that we surely trusting in your defense may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for guidance. O God, by whom the meek are guided in judgment and light rises up in darkness for the godly, grant us in all our doubts and uncertainties the grace to ask what you would have us to do, that the spirit of wisdom may save us from all false choices, and that in your light we may see light, and in your straight path may not stumble through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Bukhari, Uganda, the Right Reverend Samuel Igesa Bishop. We pray also for our Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton, and our companion dioceses, remembering today especially the Diocese of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Right Reverend Lodge Zane Roy, Senior Bishop. A prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially Ricardo, Rick, Kay, Liz, Jeff, Todd, Elizabeth, Chris, and Eva, Christopher, Ray, Bill, and Barbara, Barbara, Melanie, Lori, Linton and Gloria, Nancy, Shirley, Robert, and Leslie. I apologize that they're outside running the blower. It seems like Monday at this time they choose. We may have a drink of water. Lord, keep this. It's right outside my window. <laughs> we pray for your own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially. Oh, I just said pray for them. <laughs> we pray also today for our worship ministries, remembering especially Altar Guild, that through prayer, attention to detail, and all of God's children may experience the mystery of the Eucharist. And Eucharistic visitors, that homebound members of Good Shepherd may share in the communion of Christ's body and blood. A prayer for the parish. Almighty and ever living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayer for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we invite your prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. 
either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. Ian asks, Thanksgiving for the life and witness of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who would have been would have been 95 years old today. May we continue to strive to be free at last of the evils of racism and bigotry. Yes, thank you, Ian. You must do this. And also prayers, Julie and Pete. Say prayers for Deacon George Kennard, who has entered hospice prayers for his for his wife Judy. May the Lord grant him absolute comfort with hospice care and the preparation he makes for his next journey and give grace and, and comfort and strength to his wife, Judy, who must be by his side and read prayers to him and guide him in his next, to his next journey. May she be comforted. Dear Lord, we thank you for being here with us, for the Holy Spirit to guide us, our Lord God to sustain us, and, the, and uh, Jesus to comfort and hold us. And uh, Wendy said, I will pray for him. And me too. Okay. And uh, a prayer of St. Christostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you and you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Now go in, Lord. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And in serving him, we sustain him in our hearts. It takes the two things, to love and follow God, and then to do his work. Two things. And as you do this in the world, remember to be kind. To be kind and uplift every soul. Because in knowing Christ and in knowing the Lord God and following the Holy Spirit, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Oh,